Emphysema means inflate or swell, which makes sense because in the lungs of people with emphysema, the alveolar air sacs, which are the thin walled air spaces at the ends of the airways where oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged, become damaged or destroyed. The alveoli permanently enlarge and lose elasticity, and as a result, individuals with emphysema typically have difficulty with exhaling, which depends heavily on the ability of the lungs to recoil, like elastic bands. Emphysema is actually lumped under the umbrella of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, along with chronic bronchitis. These two differ in that chronic bronchitis is defined by clinical features, like a productive <laughs> cough, whereas emphysema is defined by structural changes, mainly enlargement of the air spaces. That being said, they almost always coexist, probably because they share the same major cause, smoking. With COPD, the airways become obstructed, and the lungs don't empty properly, and that leaves air trapped inside the lungs. For that reason, the maximum amount of air people with COPD can breathe out in a single breath, known as the FVC, or Force Vital Capacity, is lower. This reduction is especially noticeable in the first second of air breathed out in a single breath, called FEV1, Forced Expiratory Volume in One Second, which typically is reduced even more than the FVC. A useful metric, therefore, is the FEV1 to FVC ratio, which, since the FEV1 goes down even more than the FVC, causes the FEV1 to FVC ratio to go down as well. Alright, so say normally your FVC is 5 liters, and your FEV1 is 4 liters. Your FEV1 to FVC ratio would end up being 80%. Now, someone with COPD's FVC might be 4 liters instead, which is lower than normal but the volume of air that they can expire in the first second is only 2 liters. So not only are both these values lower, but their ratio is lower as well. And this is a hallmark of COPD. All that had to do with air breathed out, right? Conversely, for air going in, the TLC, or total lung capacity, which is the maximum volume of air that can be taken in or inspired into the lungs, is actually often higher because of the air trapping. Alright, so emphysema is a form of COPD that's based on structural changes in the lungs, specifically a destruction of the alveoli. Normally, though, oxygen flows out of the alveoli and into the blood, while carbon dioxide makes the reverse commute. But when the lung tissue is exposed to irritants like cigarette smoke, it triggers an inflammatory reaction that affects the delicate alveolar walls and affects the flow of gases. Inflammatory reactions attract various immune cells, which release inflammatory chemicals like leukotriene B4, interleukin-8, and tumor necrosis factor alpha, as well as proteases like elastases and collagenases. These proteases break down key structural proteins in the connective tissue layer, like collagen as well as elastin, which is a protein that gives the tissue elasticity, and this leads to the problem seen in emphysema. In healthy lungs during exhalation, air whizzes through the airways with high velocity, creating a low-pressure environment in the airway. And this is due to the Bernoulli principle, where as a fluid, which includes air, moves at higher velocity, it must have lower pressure. Now, this lower pressure tends to pull the tiny airway inward. Strong, healthy airway walls full of elastin can withstand that pressure and don't collapse. They hold the airway open and allow air to fully escape during exhalation. With emphysema, though, that elastin's lost which makes the airway walls weak and allow that low pressure system to pull the walls inward and collapse during exhalation. This ultimately leads to air trapping because the collapsed airway traps a tiny bit of air distal to the point of the collapse. Also, this loss of elastin makes the lungs more compliant, meaning that when air blows into them, they easily expand and then hold onto the air instead of expelling it during exhalation. And so the lungs start to look like large, thin plastic bags. This loss of elastin also leads to the breakdown of the thin alveolar walls called septa. Without these walls, neighboring alveoli coalesce into larger and larger air spaces, which means the surface area available for gas exchange is reduced, relative to the expanding volume, which affects oxygen and carbon dioxide levels. This process all happens in the acinus, which is the endings of the lung airways where those clusters of alveoli are located. Different types of emphysema affect the acinus slightly differently. 
The first pattern of emphysema is called centriacinar emphysema, or centrolobular emphysema. And this is the most common pattern, and it really only damages the central or proximal alveoli of the acinus. This is the pattern seen with cigarette smoking, and it's thought to happen because the irritants from the smoke aren't able to make it all the way to the distal alveoli. Centriacinar emphysema typically affects the upper lobes of the lungs. There is also panacinar emphysema, where the entire acinus is uniformly affected. And this is often associated with the genetic condition alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Now, in healthy individuals, macrophages are always letting out some proteases to help clear the debris that occasionally finds its way into the acini. But those proteases break down proteins, right? So these can damage the tissue. Alpha-1 antitrypsin is a protease inhibitor that's generated by the body to protect against unintended collateral damage from these proteases. People with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency don't have these protective protease inhibitors, and so they end up with damaged air sacs that affect the entire acinus. Panacinar emphysema typically affects the lower lobes of the lungs. A third and final type of emphysema is called paraseptal emphysema, in which the distal alveoli of the acinus are most affected. And this type typically affects the lung tissue on the periphery of the lobules, near the interlobular septa, that separates each lobule. The thing to keep in mind about paraseptal emphysema is that the ballooned out alveoli on the lung surface can rupture and cause a pneumothorax. People with emphysema typically experience symptoms like dyspnea, which is a shortness of breath, due to the air trapping and decreased gas exchange. To help counteract this, people sometimes exhale slowly through pursed lips which increases pressure inside the airways and prevents them from collapsing as easily. This way of breathing explains the nickname pink puffers, since individuals are able to oxygenate their blood, but they have to purse their lips to do so. All this constant energy spent on breathing can even cause weight loss. Over time though, as more and more lung tissue is affected, emphysema can lead to hypoxemia, or low oxygen in the blood. There can also be a cough with a small amount of spittum from inflammation in the small bronchioles that causes excess mucus production via goblet cells. But this is a lot different from the productive cough with lots of spittum seen with chronic bronchitis. Over time, air trapping and hyperinflation of the lungs can cause individuals to develop a barrel-shaped chest. And on x-ray, individuals might have an increased anterior-posterior diameter a flattened diaphragm, and increased lung field lucency. Alright, so in normal physiology, there's this process called hypoxic vasoconstriction, where if, for some reason, one area of the lungs has poor gas exchange, then the blood vessels going to that area undergo vasoconstriction in an attempt to shunt blood to an area with better gas exchange. And this works great if hypoxia is localized to one area of the lungs. But when a large proportion of the lungs aren't exchanging oxygen effectively, then that vasoconstriction starts involving too many blood vessels, and this leads to pulmonary hypertension. Over time, this increases the work that has to be done by the right side of the heart to pump blood to the lungs, causing it to enlarge, a process called core pulmonale, which eventually leads to right-sided heart failure. Treatment of emphysema largely involves reducing risk factors and managing associated illnesses. Since smoking is a major player in causing emphysema, stopping smoking is a major player in reducing mortality. Supplemental oxygen, as well as certain medications like bronchodilators, inhaled steroids, and antibiotics to control secondary infections are all helpful in managing emphysema. Alright, as a quick recap. Emphysema is a type of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, where exposure to irritants, like smoking, causes elastin in the small airways and alveolar walls to be broken down. And this leads to air trapping and poor gas exchange, both of which eventually lead to hypoxemia. Thanks for watching! You can help support us by donating on Patreon or subscribing to our channel or telling your friends about us on social media.